In this two minute tutorial, we're going to be going over the compressor settings. The most compressors are going to have these settings. I just have an example here with a bass synth. So I have a high octave bass synth and then the lower octave bass synth. And I've put a compressor on the group and it's going to be compressing both of them together. First, we have our threshold, which is right here. And I'm going to be using the activity view to show you visually as well. The threshold is the level at which the compressor will act upon. So if the signal passes the threshold setting, when the compressor will activate and implement the gain reduction settings we have set with the rest of the compressor. The blue line represents the threshold and the orange line represents how much we're compressing or reducing the signal. So if we play our bass here, we can see the signal here and we have to lower the threshold. And the more we lower the threshold, depending on our ratio, this gain reduction will be increased. Next we have our ratio. So the ratio controls the amount of compression to a signal that is above the threshold. It is an input to output ratio, meaning that if we have a ratio of two to one, two decibels of signal passing the threshold is reduced to one decibel of signal coming out of the compressor. The higher the ratio, the more the compression will be implemented on the signal passing the threshold. So if we increase our ratio, more signal will be reduced. Last, we have our attack and release times, and these are really important and can be used for a variety of reasons. The attack is how fast the compressor reacts after a signal passes the threshold. The faster the attack, the faster the compressor will close down on the signal and reduce the volume. The release time is how long the compression will take to reduce back to normal after a signal has passed over the threshold. So if we have our attack setting all the way to zero, then as soon as that signal is passed over the threshold, it's going to clamp down the compressor and it's going to reduce the transients almost immediately. That can take the life out of your sound, but sometimes it's necessary to have a very fast attack to reduce the transients at the very beginning of a sound. More naturally, we can have a slower attack, but sometimes it'll miss the initial transients and it can cause problems on its own. Finding the proper attack time is very important. Now what we're gonna do is use a five to one ratio and we're gonna set our attack and release times because the signal is really punchy, I want to have a moderately fast attack and a moderately fast release. Okay, so I'm taking away a bit of the initial transient, but I'm trying to make the sound more averaged out. So now I'm going to turn my makeup gain and we're going to listen to the difference. Before compression. After. The sound is more present and a bit bulkier, although we've reduced a bit of the dynamic range and made the volume of the overall sound louder and it's gonna be more present in the mix. The general rule of thumb, instead of using the same attack and release times on every track, use your best judgment when compressing the sound. Never just compress something for the sake of compressing it, only use a compressor when you understand why you are compressing.